Ryan Manchi here with Basis Technologies. I am excited to sit down with Rahul from QNOL. Uh, he is the CMO. Uh, Rahul, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I'm uh, very excited uh, to learn more about your, your company and also how you're focused on both building brand awareness for a uh, newish startup company in the supplement space um, and also very successfully driving great performance. Yeah, I mean, um, thank you, first of all, for having me. Um, privileged to be here. Um, it's, been, it's been a journey with, uh, with QNOL. Uh, prior to that, I worked with um, bigger CPG companies for like 15 years. <laughs> um, so I wanted to really take a shot at what would it be to really understand and how to build a brand from scratch. Um, so I came across this uh, company, very well run by a founder, um, but we essentially are a big, um, are a leading heart health and joint health uh, brand. Um, and yes, but it, what I love about it is in any new startup, you always have this question about a product market fit, whether the product actually has a market for it. But when I came in, I was like, it looks like there's a market fit here. The, the initial numbers were really good, but how do we now take it to the next level? And, and that's really exciting for any marketer to be able to paint a story and be, be able to paint, um, uh, build a brand in some sense which stays for decades to come in. So that's the journey where I am in now. And so currently today, the, the product it's available direct to consumer, right, through your website? It's a little yeah. bit, but okay. essentially we have a mass retail. So okay. we, are, right. we, we sell across most of the channels where you can okay. buy a supplement business. So Costco, Walmart, Amazon, um, most of the retailers and drug. Um, yes, we do have a D2C business, but that, that's, that's small considering everything else. So primary focus on, the, the, on, that, on that retail side. Do you, as you, you expand in this space, one of the, the big topics, big, big trends for the last year is the idea of more of these like retail media networks. Yes. Um, as you've engaged with many of these major retailers, uh, are you starting to get some more interesting data points, uh, uh, some increased ability to better, better target, better measure, get some more of that performance data back from those retailers through their efforts? For sure. Listen, I've been I've been watching the retail and media space not last year. It's probably been even 2017, 2018. This this was a time when Walmart Walmart Connect wasn't there. They used to do mm -hmm. it through an agency. Target uh, Roundel wasn't there doing through an agency. And honestly, I like in my last role, um, we were one of the first brands to uh, to actually. Um, pilot test, Amazon search, when mm -hmm. Amazon search coming. Yeah. We're talking about 2015 and long years yeah. back. And I've seen this whole evolution, right, of what they wanted, what they think they could add value and what they're adding value now. Um, the retail media, op for any marketer who is in the CPG space, in the retail space, retail media opens up a completely new dimension. It's easy to say it's down funnel. Obviously, mm -hmm. it is down funnel. Like being at the shelf, online shelf, when somebody uh, is, is in that, point of purchase is critical. But if you look at what Amazon advertising is doing now and the kind of brands that you're talking about, I was just in the panel where um, you're hearing from like brands like DoorDash and like how they're now trying to go up funnel. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot more that you can do. There's a lot more that can be done. The key for any retail media is the data that they have, right? The challenge of digital has always been and will be data. Um, and retail media, just having that near source of access to data is key. So attributions are, I won't say completely perfect, but you actually get to see, I, I would say it's probably a little bit overestimated because yes, mm. it's a, the last click attribution, but still you get to know what, what's moving the needle. Yeah. yeah. Like big believer in what Amazon advertising has been able to do. Uh, and I think all other retailers are catching up. Yeah, we've seen some great success with many of those different partners, including Amazon with, you know, our any of the CPG focused clients that we've we've got within the space. It's really kind of fascinating. So outside of that, maybe that retail media space for the paid media that you're running, where else are you seeing success? Is it is it I imagine quite a bit with search? Uh, is there display as well? But we're uh, a lot of search. Yeah, a lot of search. It, search is stable stake, stable sure. stake at this moment of time. Um, a lot more that we can do with search. Um, I'll probably say social is the next one. I do not mm -hmm. know what, uh, but social has gone through its own journey in the last 12 months. Um, we went from feeling that we had something to saying, you know what, 
let's pull back because the whole iOS 14 attribution, um, being able to target, all of those went away. We're still trying to figure our way out mm -hmm. into it, um, but it's not been easy. It's not been easy. And again, what, that's one of the one of the key points that I love to speak with any market here in South by Southwest is like, how are you guys navigating mm -hmm. it? Um, it was a big muscle for particularly brands which were building their D2C business, uh, which seems to have got shaken a lot. Yeah, it's been, I mean, it's not nearly decimated, you know, part, parts of the industry with some of the challenges, but what, what I've seen- I don't seen, know what you would call uh, yeah. the, the share price of Facebook going down. That's pretty decimated. Yeah, I mean, it was it was incredible, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's been fascinating to see more companies invest in their own data um, and get smarter about that first party data and how they can activate those specific audiences as well as create those, those lookalikes up, upon that. Are you seeing success with that? Has that been a priority? And is it a priority this year to um, pull in more of the data uh, that you're able to get on those on those consumers and those audiences? In digital, that's the first yeah. ROI. That's the all the best ROI. Like right? your own audience and look alike of your own audience. So again, for me, that again looks like more table stake um, works. Like you, you can put that against any data, any audience from uh, any three P. Um, this will always perform better, but it's intuitive, right? You're speaking to people who are there. The challenge comes in is when you're trying to really drive penetration and how can you use digital media to drive penetration? Um, I haven't found many brands who have been able to do that at scale, mm -hmm. right? You can do it, but how do you do it at scale profitably? Um, because then you need to go venture out beyond the people who have already bought you with the lookalikes of that and, and add that 95% probability, the 90% probability, and the 80% probability, and be able to test them every every step. Um, I'm interested in in your organization. Uh, so you're the the CMO. Um, have you brought on, um, and do you have plans to bring on um, new new experts, uh, new capabilities? Is there are there cross training opportunities <coughs> that are happening to boost up the existing teams that you have? Um, and has that changed or is that changing your alignment working with outside agencies and outside partners that it's kind of trend of in-housing, I guess, is where I'm kind of going of how you all have embraced it and how you're thinking about it. As a marketer, staying ahead of the digital curve is utmost important. Um, and probably that's one of the challenges that keep me awake at night because it's it's not a one-time fix solution, right? I have been through a journey, again, I'm going back a little bit to my previous days when I worked with a bigger organization from outsourcing it to bring it in-house to bring it with a hybrid. Again, a lot depends on what your objective is. What is the next two, three years going to look like? In my current organization, um, we are, again, pretty much like a startup mature uh, business. Um, Having that control and being able to really drive growth and being in control of being able to drive growth is key, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but the key thing that comes in is uh, talent. I, I, digital talent isn't easy mm -hmm. uh, to find, uh, to afford, and, and sometimes you you build a whole fantastic team and then um, you see people leave. Um, that becomes uh, a challenge always. To But to answer your overall question, um, in housing, is a long-term goal, but I still believe that it's always going to be a hybrid because the technology has changed so fast mm -hmm. that either an organization invests a lot in staying ahead of the curve themselves, and not many organizations can do it. Yeah. But if you are among those organizations who um, have to manage growth along with um, building a team, you'll probably have to end up in a hybrid. You have to somewhere get best in, best uh, best in best practices from somewhere. Yeah, but I, I think that approach, it's, it's smart. And I think that's the, the way that most folks have ultimately netted out, even if they had greater ambitions to do more and, hey, I want to do everything. It's just not realistic uh, based upon the talent, based upon the capabilities, based upon staying on top of it. So I think really that definition of in-housing is a kind of hybrid type of de definition, I would what, also what say, your, your vision and your goal is. Yeah, but I also see agencies have to step up. Yeah. I, I feel... Um, Agencies know this, and that's why they, they haven't really evolved their model to how to service the new decade. Mm -hmm. um, I think if they step up, it could be a little bit more interesting hmm. uh, discussion, right? Think of it the way, the way we talk about in-housing, which all this means it's from the client's perspective. 
But what's the industry term for it? What is the agency calling that? What is their role in that kind of uh, thing, right? And if it's hybrid, what is their role? Where do they add most value? How would you def- how would define a contract of or, or a relationship of that uh, sort? It's interesting. It's a question. It's a, a question. question to, uh, it's a good question and a question to to be answered. So, um, yeah, it's a, a good a good call to to action to all the agencies out there to to step up. Uh, so I, I love that. The the one last question I want to ask you is. If, uh, if I gave you a magic wand and you could change one thing in the industry and your job for your team, for your company, what would that one thing be? This is exactly the same question asked in the panel. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and I said, listen, if, if, if it was easy to one question, it would have been such a lovely life. Um, but since we are speaking in the whole topic yeah. of media, I think the, the piece that I, I would repeat, which I said, because I'm feeling that struggle every day. As a marketeer, who, who loves building brands, right? Um, you want to build that whole brand story, brand authenticity. You want to spend that, that importance given to how to build a connection. But how do I balance that with performance marketing? How do we have one level, or what I call one stick of measurement, right? Which could give us a true read of what does the top funnel brand building um, ca- campaign or push how does that complement a performance marketing? Like, I, I heard this term and I agree. Like, every, why is it performance marketing? Every marketing dollar should perform, right? It's just that we haven't been able to define what top level does. Uh, and I think it's high time because otherwise this whole push behind performance marketing and retail media is going to take away the whole charm of what what we all love doing is building brands. Uh, but again, it, it, it's between us, between agencies, between brands, between measuring uh measuring agencies that we need to define how do we make this work and and some things which i love again i go back to <clears throat> some developments which give me hope for example if you look at amazon marketing cloud um uh, i've seen that for four years back or three years back when when i was i was uh, i would say um, one of the core group to be able to share this uh, idea with and i'm seeing it now and i think yeah if you have that kind of transparency it would really help the whole marketing uh, organizations, team, and the marketing community mm-hmm. to be able to do the job best. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Well, great advancements, trying to simplify some of the complexity within the industry and for our organizations as we're looking to better measure and prove their performance and also prove the value of brand. So yeah. thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Rahul. Always and, a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for calling thank me. You.